after you take that top card. When I die, I want my last words to be, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! The recent events surrounding the Diddler have sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry. Allegations of trafficking and drugging guests at his notorious white parties have surfaced, casting a dark shadow over his legacy. These exclusive events, once known for their opulence and star-studded guest lists, are now under intense scrutiny. Your parties are the hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. But we, we ain't gonna stop. We gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. You gonna hear about my party? They're gonna be shutting them down. They're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we wanna have a good time. You know, whenever you bring up a different element into people's environment, things that broaden people's horizon, people get intimidated. The indictment is 14 pages long. Um, the detail is incredibly graphic in that indictment um, and with what it describes, specifically in relation to uh, the video evidence that, that the agents have seized. Yeah, well, you've read through that very closely, Sammy, as I have. Yeah. But, but take us through that indictment, Sammy. I mean, we both read through that and everything sort of yeah, it captures your attention pretty much on every line, but uh, you know, what are those allegations? No, absolutely. Coming? Look, um, he's been charged on three counts. He's been charged on racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking, and transportation to engage in prostitution. Um, and they're pretty big claims, pretty big accusations. Um, the detail that's in the indictment is quite frankly, quite horrific. Um, it describes, you know, these sex parties that Sean Combs would allegedly host. Um, he called them freak offs. Um, they're really graphic, kind of awful things to discuss, but essentially um, what the indictment says is that uh, women and uh, male sex workers were brought in to kind of undertake a sexual performance. Um, and that's the trafficking side of things. Absolutely. And that a lot of these encounters were filmed. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's really it's really tough stuff to kind of talk about and, and tough to read. Um, Diddy parties. Um, those are those are assault parties. And I was one of the kids that was one of the party favors. And a party favors means that you're set on top of a table and you're used as a toy for anybody who comes across the table or who wants to party at a certain time of night when the music stops and then the DJ starts flashing all these lights and they close the doors and then everybody turns into like a frenzy and starts going into a crazed animal-like demonic state and you have no idea what's going on and yes there was a time where I was just like completely don't give a sh because it happened and I was the type of kid that thought that you know you're in the presence of royalty and they make it seem like you're in the presence of Hollywood so you should be you should be honored and you should be appreciating that you're there and I was that person I totally acted like that I was like oh it's fine you know it really doesn't matter but then it really did matter well nobody's really asking about the kids that are present in these parties now and were then because they're really just going after all the celebrities and the adults, which I'm happy that we're finally here and I'm grateful that we're finally pulling the names that need to be pulled and the big fishes that need to be pulled. But at the same time, nobody's asking about the kids and, and, and who else is really there. And no, it's just not about all these dudes having sex. They need people to fluff them, which are hand jobs and jobs. And those are the kids and the people on the party favors desk. And then on top of that, there's this big ass wheel and they make it like a carnival thing and they they literally strap you to a wheel and spin it. And then after a certain time, there's animals. And then after a certain time, you have no idea what's happening because you're numb. We were talking to her about these raids that were done on Short Combs' properties in Miami and in Los Angeles. Um, I think at the time, the raids were seen to be quite destructive, you know, that they were almost um, over the top in a way, very messy, you know, every couch cushion turned over, you know, property damage done as they kind of, federal agents combed through 
every corner of, of those properties and those raids were done uh, at the same time as well um, and Tracy told us at the time that that was probably to prevent uh, anyone trying to destroy evidence. Yeah, we cottoned on pretty quick, didn't we, in that interview uh, a few months ago that she was talking about something that might have been taped or, or a lot of things that might have been taped and on video in his possession. Was that federal agents were specifically looking for, for video evidence, for digital evidence, whether that was flash drives, hard drives, you know, home security systems, those kinds of things. And we now know uh, after Combs's arrest and the indictment um, that she was correct that what they've discovered is video evidence but when you also look at what else was seized from the properties at that time not just video evidence but firearms uh, narcotics you know a thousand bottles of baby oil yeah, it's that's, bizarre it is and then you look at the racketeering side of things don't you it, racketeering is a funny one because you when you hear racketeering and rico you think of crime gangs bike groups but when we spoke to Tracy, she was pretty clear about it, wasn't she, that this can now apply to individuals and the accusation in Diddy's case is that he's formed this protected group around him who would do his bidding. That's the accusation here and that's the racketeering side of things. Yeah, you know, when we were talking to Tracy, she uh, suspects that there are other people that might be caught up in this, that, you know, there might be more charges laid and that a lot of people in Diddy's inner circle may actually choose to turn against him and, and share their own stories about what they may have witnessed. Some of those people may turn on him. Some of those people may decide to, you know, speak with federal agents uh, in the case against him that that's a pretty big claim yeah, a lot of civil cases against Diddy, isn't there we, we should make note of that um, but in this indictment it's only one victim and that victim is not named yeah. so we're talking here that a lot of the evidence in that indictment so far is actually from witnesses as opposed to victims all of this came about because the, the raids themselves back in march were triggered by a lawsuit um, that was filed by his ex-girlfriend by cassie ventura her bravery is to be commended in, in talking about this and, and bringing this up. And we know from that video that leaked to CNN of his uh, 2016 assault of her in a Los Angeles hotel um, that she's obviously been through a lot. Um, it must have taken a lot for, for her to speak out and to uh, file her own lawsuit. Um, and a lot of what she and her legal team allege in that lawsuit lines up almost word for word with things that we are now seeing, claims that are being made in that indictment, in that federal indictment. It felt like Cassie was the person and that was the moment, wasn't it, where accusers started being believed more broadly. Absolutely. You know, we have decades of rumour swirling about Diddy. He had caught me texting another man. We were in his closet and he like pushed me and I fell to the ground. He like stood over me. He avoided my face, but he like started punching me like on the side of the, my head and I was just like covering my face. He like stomped on my stomach, like took the wind out of my breath. I couldn't even, I couldn't breathe. Pleading to him like, can you can you stop? And he like stopped for a little bit. He like grabbed my hair from the back and like was um, like punching the back of my head. I never thought that we would see the day where Diddy would get arrested. And I told you guys in that Maria Z interview in 2021 that no one tells on Diddy, P Diddy, all right? Just the same way nobody tells on Denzel Washington. People don't usually talk and stop and think about the children victims that are going through things right now as we speak and the ones who suffered through all this I decided to stop for a second and do some projects with some with with projects all around because we just said you know what this is our life it's not changing we stopped somewhere and I've been hiding my mom and I have been hiding we've had her head down we tried to back up we've tried to tell you everything that we can and now we have people messaging us investigators, people that want to talk now, when now it's because it's trending. We're still not on the subject of the kids. All the adults are covering their All the adults are, I left at a certain time, yet you knew children were there. You knew these parties were not okay. They weren't freak-offs, they were safe ritual orgies. Get it straight. 
It wasn't just adults in these parties. The adults were responsible for the child slaves that were in the party. And one of those children were me. You know he's about to turn into another Epstein and then the list follows and it circles back into a web. So why isn't anybody demanding any information on the kids? Huh? Where'd that supply chain come from? Do you think that thousands of bottles worth of baby oil was for thousands of who? $65,000 worth of hot dogs and pizza was for who? Trafficking over the border was for who? We're not talking about the victims that are still going through the right now with other people who are running to cover their and deleting their social medias pink megan fox tyra banks steve harvey why are you running you know what a part of me feels like you know what good run because then you get to see how it feels to have to jump and throw everything that you give it about away for two seconds get a moment of peace for not a moment not a moment of peace you take it and you you run with it because you're happy about the peace but then you see how it feels when they get the sh when they get shaky you see how it feels when the world is a little quiet like oh my superstar my idol what about the victims our ptsd lives on every day that they did what they did but it's only talked about when it's trending we got legal evidence to drop. I just don't know what's the point. Yeah, I was at a Diddy party. I was one of the party favors. But I told you, nobody tells on Diddy. Maria Z, I did that interview in 2021. Seven months ago. We made sure... I already knew <laughs> that Diddy and Oprah is about to get arrested. I already knew that seven, eight months ago. We went and made sure there were sworn documents. We have them. When we went to Colorado for the A to Z event, we had a lot of legal evidence that we made sure we already had because we knew a list of people were about to get got. You can't run for that long. I'm just shocked we're finally seeing the day. The adults who are swearing up and down, I left at one o'clock in the morning. You shouldn't have been there in the first place. You You're shouldn't disgusting. have been there. And on top of that, if and you knew <clears throat> that there were children coming in after a certain hour, why the hell didn't you say anything until right now? Coward. Kids have like an hour left. <laughs> so get extra comfortable. But this thing turns into something that when y'all get older, y'all don't want to come to. Did you ever go to a Diddy party? Yes. And what was it like? A Diddy is, party? Is it like off, what they have in the media? Off, or off the hook. Off the hook? And whenever they went into the quote-unquote alleged other section, yeah. I was never there. You were gone. They, you they, were they, gone. That's like, I guess, I think in general, getting away from Diddy, and, and God bless him and whatever else he's dealing with, I don't beat people uh, while they're down. That's just mm -hmm. not who I am character-wise. No one can erase his legacy. Mm -hmm. But did you party with Diddy a lot? Oh, uh, no, not really. I would go to the party and, and leave early. Why wouldn't you stay? Right? <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> I go to the party and leave early. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I wasn't invited to too many of those parties. Why, I mean, didn't, you, to, why didn't you stay late, like after hours? Did it, it get know. crazy after that or what? I, I don't know what goes on after, par, after hours, but... He wasn't trying to find out. I wasn't trying to find out. <laughs> and Zell always told me we'd be at the parties. He said, you leave... Leave 30 minutes for the devil get there. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Always remember that Denzel would leave the parties early. Mm -hmm. I followed Denzel out. You know, I invited everybody. Everybody was Jamie Foxx, Ashton, Cameron Diaz. I mean, it was Will Smith, Chris Rock. Everybody that was moving and shaking in Hollywood. So a lot of the celebrity culture that you don't hear saying anything is because they participated. I was throwing this party for the MTV Movie Award. Beckham's was dead. I remember... Beyonce was there. Jerry comes to get me and says, you have, a, you have a guest here who wasn't on the list. And I'm like, who? It was like Michael Jackson. So then I go towards the back and it's Michael. I'm like, Michael, what you, what's up? Like, what you doing here? And he was like, you know, I'm here with Brett Ratner. You know, we, we, came, we came to the party. Is everything cool? Can we come? Now everybody know now about the Diddy parties, but you go to the Diddy party, it's going to be like an eyes wide shut. I remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel, filming this, and it's a pool party that is 
ridiculous money. Say that you don't want to do something and Diddy does want you to do it. It's really hard to not do that thing. Mm. Like he's very influential. I distinctly remember going to a Diddy party, all the waitress was topless. They serving you, everybody topless. He got dancers in cages, people walking around with lions on leash, tigers on leashes. I seen this with my own two eyes. But the, everything everybody said, I've been saying for years, bro. These boys are weird. You will go to a party with them, and you looking around like, a lot of guys kissing each other in here, man. You feel me? What y'all do is y'all business. So you, you been to a party and seen this? Oh, I've seen it firsthand, multiple times. We trying to shake up the world, baby. You know what I'm saying? We trying to do some rip here. You know what I mean? I got in my Diddy mode. I'm sorry. I started licking my lip. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yo, Diddy, you gave me the Ooshkosh Kooshmash. You gave me the Ooshkosh Muaf. The Shmooshmash. Diddy. Yeah, son. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You gave me the Ooshkosh Muaf. I love it. Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No. Not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were thirteen. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle, right? And, and I saw it, and it was, <laughs> and it was. But I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was crazy. tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. You all know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans, Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige. They ain't know nothing about this Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Uh, there's some proof, evidence, that people were being drugged, and then things were being recorded, videotaped, and then that was used against executives or individuals to get further in, in their deals. What can you, what can you shed... Uh, on that topic. Yeah, the the, the names, and, and, and you, what you're gonna find here, it's the same circle. It's the Epstein circle, it's the it's the Harvey Weinstein circle. Remember, they run in packs. Football players hang with football players. Ba baseball players with baseball players. The industry run in packs. 15 years of freak out parties. Who do you think went through there? Everybody. They, they went through there. Now, does it mean they're all complicit in trafficking? No, but they saw stuff and they talk about it and they know and they know what happens at midnight they know what happens at midnight yeah. at midnight certain things happen girls get naked all of a sudden everybody's naked all of a sudden they find out oh have i been kissing on a man or, or a tranny is this a dude or a girl all by all being recorded at midnight so who was with you this weekend a bunch of my friends diddy quincy Justin Bieber, so far so good. Montana. <laughs> no, half the people you're naming. No. I got on a plane at 5.30 a.m. Go this party. I think half the people there were butt naked. You would have loved it. Um, when you met the too, like, cool friends. No. Well, kind of. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Stop. Stop talking. We met Chloe's new crew of friends. And all I said was, yes. Excuse me, I need the phones, guys. I need the phones. I need the phones. I need your phones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Quincy, I know you have two phones, Quincy. Oh, there you go. That's what I love. Yeah. Just glow. So proud of you, Justin Lowe. Look at that. Got all the phones. Do I have everybody's phones? All these people, I knew. I knew, I knew he was crazy. So you guilty. I told you everybody guilty. You're guilty. Get that straight. I don't care who it is that's saying, uh, I, I left at one o'clock in the morning. Because why? Because why? They make sure in those parties that they have blackmail evidence. So if they go down, they taking everybody down with them. I pray to God that this is the day. I pray to God that this is the time because all the victims deserve some type of justice and it's just a matter of taking accountability and somebody saying, we are f sorry that we didn't hear you guys forever ago. There are people who are dead. There are babies who have lost their lives because nobody was listening. 
And now everybody, I want to listen. You are late. From the indictment, we do know that, you know, he would invite young women and male sex workers to participate in these kinds of sex parties that sometimes went on for days, um, were so brutal and severe that, you know, people needed IV drips to rehydrate uh, once they were done. You know, there's allegations that people that participated in these parties willingly or perhaps unwillingly were left so battered and bruised afterwards that they couldn't go outside, they couldn't be seen because the, the damage that had been done was kind of so severe. It's, it's really horrific it's stuff. sickening to read and hear, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The white parties are not just gatherings, they are experiences. Attendees were treated to lavish decorations, gourmet food and top tier entertainment. However, disturbing reports suggest that behind the glamour, there were sinister activities taking place. Allegations of wild freak-offs and hidden videos of famous celebrities have emerged, raising serious questions about what really went down behind closed doors. The media frenzy surrounding these revelations has only intensified, with every detail being dissected and debated. The accusations have sparked public debate about celebrity culture and excess. Fans and critics alike are weighing in on the implications of such shocking behavior discussing the broader issues of privilege and the impact of celebrity influence on society. The white parties are now seen in a different light. What was once a testament to P. Diddy's ability to create unforgettable experiences is now a symbol of potential exploitation and abuse. The fallout from these allegations could be far-reaching, affecting not just P. Diddy but also the many celebrities who attended these events. The revelations have sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry. Colleagues, fans, and industry insiders are all reacting to the news with many expressing shock and disbelief. The events have prompted a re-evaluation of P. Diddy's contributions and the impact of his actions on the industry. This situation raises questions about the role of celebrities in shaping cultural norms. The white parties are a high-stakes endeavor that showcase P. Diddy's resilience and creativity. They also highlight the challenges that come with fame and the scrutiny that public figures face when pushing boundaries. What do we know about people now distancing themselves or distancing themselves from Combs? Yeah, I think um, if we go back 10, 15, even 20 years, Sean Combs's parties were these really, you know, infamous things. They were super luxurious lavish affairs. He was really famous, especially for his white parties, which he'd throw on Labor Day. Every um, celebrity under the sun, we've been pictured of those over the years. You know, we, we've got video of and photos of um, lots and lots of different celebrities at, at these parties. And a lot of those people have come out now and said that they, uh, they're they distancing themselves, obviously, from Combs, that they weren't aware of perhaps what was going on after those parties took place. Um, because the, the allegations here are so heinous that, you know, people really want to be making sure <laughs> that they're not attached to it in any way. And that's an important point, isn't it? So ostensibly, there have been these really lavish white parties every year, throws them in the Hamptons, all these A-listers saying that there's tapes and they're being shopped. There already have been tapes uh, leaking around Hollywood, being shopped around to individuals in Hollywood. But one particular person contacted me to shop a particular video they were in possession of and to contact the person who was in the video to see if they were interested in purchasing the video before it became a public knowledge. I've heard this. Mr. Combs was in the tape and this other person is I would venture to say more high profile than Mr. Home. Really? This was actually in his Atlanta home, okay. at a home he had in Atlanta at one point. And um, it does seem that it's, the person isn't like looking into the video. So it's, to me, doesn't seem like that person knows they're being videotaped. His freak out parties in attendance were celebrities, politicians, athletes, international dignitaries like British royalty, Prince Harry, and music label executives. Lil Rod claims some of the biggest names in the recording industry sponsored these parties with sex workers, drugs, and underage girls. The CEO of Universal Music, Lucian Grange, is named as a defendant. So is the former CEO of Motown Records, Ethiopia, Habert Mariam, and others. Lil Rod says hidden cameras were in every room of Diddy's homes. Lil Rod believes that Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties 
and his house parties. Salacious tapes of Hollywood's biggest names, including record CEOs and politicians doing drugs and cavorting with and minors. The complaint argues that these freak-off parties were a business model. Young and up-and-coming talent attended and were promised career opportunities and access to music executives. They were then plied with drugs and alcohol, filmed. Some were blackmailed. There was a quid pro quo, according to the complaint. Lil Rod said not only were these music executives sponsoring these parties, they were handing Diddy large sums of cash that he used to pay for the sex workers and drugs. Something tells me the IRS is going to be interested. Yeah, and it's changed his life pretty rapidly, hasn't it, over the past few months? He's gone from two mega mansions in LA and Miami. Um, now, what's his life looking like now in a jail cell? In a jail cell, exactly. You know, in one of the most uh, notorious and dangerous prisons in New York, in, in the Brooklyn um, Metropolitan Detention Centre. It's quite a, an infamous place. Um, it doesn't sound like he's having a great time. Wouldn't have thought <laughs> so. I mean, what do we know about that place? Yeah, look, it's a really, um, it's a notorious prison in New York. It's quite a dangerous place. Um, we know that he's currently uh, in a dormitory style room. The fact that he's there I think is um, quite significant also because uh, his legal team applied for bail not once but twice um, and was denied and they were going to put up a bond of 50 million dollars you know, uh, his daughter's and his mother's passport, the equity of one of his condos, um, you know, he, he wanted to do home detention with GPS trackers and, and they denied his bail applications. That's pretty much everything in the book that a defence team absolutely. could offer. $50 million is a lot of money. Huge. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, there's obviously real concerns there. And concerns about potentially him being a flight risk. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, someone with a lot of... You know, inner circles and you know, means of which to get around. So does that mean that you know, if he's been proven guilty in court, you know, could we potentially never see Diddy out of jail ever again? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's an important question. I, I think it will be interesting to see how this trial plays out. Um, there may be further charges laid. We know um, from past cases that these things can take months, if not years. Um, to, to kind of shake out. And so there's probably still a lot to come. 784 male shaped toys. Do you have any idea what that looks like? Well, I'm gonna show you because that's apparently how many of those they pulled out of the raid, no pun intended, um, on Diddy's house when they also found the thousand bottles of lubricant and baby oil. Now my favorite part is that they found all of these and they're like, photo op. And I feel like this guy and this guy are doing their best to not crack a smile. And look, the situation's not funny. It really is quite serious, but this is a ridiculous amount of these. The FBI found a tunnel this morning at the mansion of famous rapper Diddy in Los Angeles, part two. After receiving an anonymous tip from neighbors, agents rushed to the scene. During their search, they uncovered a tunnel beneath the carpet in Diddy's bedroom. Despite the family's pleas not to enter, the officers hesitated, but ultimately decided to go in. The tunnel looked freshly dug, with wet dirt on the walls and trash scattered around. As they ventured deeper, the narrow space suddenly opened up to reveal six locked rooms. The agents couldn't access these rooms, and even more bizarrely, they found multiple intersections ahead in the tunnel. For safety, the agents called for backup and split up to investigate further. What they discovered was shocking. A tunnel connecting to the infamous Playboy Mansion, along with others leading to several Hollywood celebrities' homes. As the agents delved deeper, they quickly surrounded these residences. Diddy's private island, shipping container island right across the way. Diddy's island, with all of his friends, just a short drive away from a very huge island platform full of shipping containers and you have to go right next to the Coast Guard. We all know what's been sealed and talked about. What are the odds that this man lives on this island just a short walk away from this entire, this entire platform of shipping containers? Come on, what do Diddy and shipping containers have in common? Did anybody else know this? 
this right here kind of blows my mind because if I was some star, the last place I'd go put my island is anywhere close to anything like that. So why in the world are these two so close to each other? And what do these and this have in common? And the fact that you have to go right past the US Coast Guard, that's pretty crazy. But hey, Diddy's Island that just got raided is a short boat ride away from a whole bunch of shipping containers. Do you see the connection? The legal troubles began with a dramatic home raid that has now escalated into a series of disturbing allegations. The raid on the Diddler's home was a significant event, drawing immediate media attention. Law enforcement officials executed a search warrant, leading to the discovery of evidence that has now become central to the ongoing investigation. Following the raid, the Diddler was arrested, marking a pivotal moment in the unfolding legal drama. The arrest was widely covered by the media, with images of the music mogul in handcuffs making headlines around the world. The public's fascination with the Diddler's legal troubles has been intense. The media has been relentless in its coverage, often sensationalizing the events to capture the audience's attention. This has only added to the pressure on the Diddler as he navigates these challenging times. The Diddler's legal team is now working tirelessly to address the charges. The names that we're going to name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is, those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. They know who they are. We are waiting on the other names involved. You ain't gonna hear them. I guarantee you, you ain't gonna hear them. Yeah, them feds, they gonna take that money and run. They just released the entire list of everybody that's partied with P. Diddy and did God knows what. And the list is long, I'm telling you, it is extremely long. And some of these names surprise me and it's heartbreaking. Serena Williams, David Beckham, Victoria Beckham, Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith, Chris Brown, Rick Ross, Nick Minaj, Tyler the Creator, Megan the Stallion, Cardi B, Chris Jenner, Lupita Nyong, Sean Penn, wow, Tyrese Gibson, Zendaya, Big Sean, Michael B. Jordan, Future, Adele, Steve Harvey, Tiana Taylor, Floyd Mayweather, Dr. Dre, LL Cool J, Swiss Beats. Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, they got Deadpool? Mark Wahlberg, Cara Delevingne, Iggy Azalea, Rihanna, Mariah Carey, Pharrell Williams, Paris Hilton, Justin Bieber, 50 Cent, Kendall and Kylie Jenner, Lil' Kim, Drake, Snoop Dogg, Alicia Keys. I'm telling you guys, this list is long. Jay-Z, Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, Naomi Campbell, Mary J. Blige, Leonardo DiCaprio, Usher, we all knew about Usher, Chris Rock, Nas, Eva Longoria, Pharrell Williams, Lewis Hamilton, or is it Louis Hamilton, Joe Jonas, Sofia Vergara, Shakira, Demi Lovato, John Legend, and Chrissy Teigen, Post Malone, Travis Scott, Ellen DeGeneres, Kevin Hart, Jamie Foxx, Oprah Winfrey, Quincy Jones, DJ Khaled, bro, Lenny Kravitz, Madonna, ASAP Rocky, Meek Mill, no surprise there, Nomani, Miguel, Hailey Bieber, Jaden Smith, Prince Harry, Princess Beatrice of York, and Princess Eugene of York, and Princess Charlotte Kasaragi of Monaco. Nick Jonas, come on, man. you know I met that guy one day and he was really, really cool. That's so sad to see. Charlie's Theron. Justin Timberlake, Gigi Hadid and Bella Hadid, Zoe Kravitz, Diplo, Offset. Name someone who was famous in the early aughts and there's a photo of them partying with Diddy. Leonardo DiCaprio, Sarah Jessica Parker, Martha Stewart, Jamie Foxx, Russell Simmons, Jennifer Lopez, Jay-Z, Vera Wang, Russell Brand, Chevy Chase, Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton, LL Cool J, Aretha Franklin, Reverend Al Sharpton, and even Regis Philbin have all been photographed at a Diddy party over the years. With his fame and resources, he has access to top-notch legal representation, but 
the complexities of the case present significant challenges. The legal issues the Diddler faces are multifaceted and could have far-reaching consequences. The courtroom has become the new stage where this drama unfolds, with every detail being scrutinized by the public and the media. The emotional and financial toll of these legal battles is immense. The Diddler, like many before him, is experiencing the harsh realities of the legal system. The outcomes of these proceedings could significantly impact his career and personal life. This case serves as a stark reminder that no one is above the law, regardless of their status. The legal system is designed to uphold justice, and it applies to everyone. The Diddler's situation highlights the importance of personal conduct and the potential repercussions of legal troubles. As the legal proceedings continue, the world watches closely. The outcome of the Diddler's case will not only affect him but also serve as a broader commentary on the intersection of fame, fortune, and the law. It underscores the fundamental principle that actions have consequences and that the pursuit of justice is a cornerstone of our society. Allegations of trafficking and drugging guests at the Diddler's infamous white parties have surfaced, painting a dark picture of these exclusive events. Reports of wild freak-offs and hidden videos of famous celebrities are now raising serious questions about what really went down behind closed doors. The impact of these revelations could be far-reaching, potentially implicating some of the biggest names in entertainment. As more details emerge, the entertainment industry is bracing for a scandal that could shake its very foundations. Is this the end of the Diddler's reign, or just the beginning of a deeper scandal? The world watches as the legal proceedings unfold, eager to see how these shocking allegations will be addressed and what the future holds for the diddler and those involved. It's a very delicate balance that maybe investigators will want to know these other names and greatly reduce his exposure to criminality to time versus what people would do to keep him quiet. Number one, I've been knowing him a long time. And we was friends. We're not enemies, but we were friends. He's not a dummy. So he's smart enough to work his magic. On top of that, this man right here, he's been involved with the FBI and for most of his career. Yeah, he got powerful people. So once they got on once they got on drugs, once they got on alcohol, and that's when the weird stuff happened. And I think that's what took Buffy down that lane. David, you gotta remember, Clyde Davis, Russell Simmons, Andre Arreo. Simon, come on. You gotta believe it. Alcohol, drugs, he compromised his manhood. Because he was taught that. He got Usher as a kid. They never recorded no songs, but alcohol, drugs, Simon. sex. Justin Bieber. And see, they do these things to take control. They're not doing, there's nothing wrong with being gay. You choose to be gay, that's your preference. But they're doing this to people for control. The white parties were known for their exclusivity and extravagance, attracting some of the biggest names in entertainment. However, recent revelations paint a much darker picture of these events. Allegations of wild freak-offs and hidden videos of famous celebrities are now surfacing, raising serious questions about what really went down behind closed doors. Some of the biggest names in entertainment are now under scrutiny as hidden videos and testimonies come to light. Social media is abuzz with reactions, and news outlets are dedicating significant airtime to discuss the broader implications of the case. Public perception of P. Diddy has been severely affected. While some fans are quick to defend him, others are vocal about their disappointment and concern. The court of public opinion is divided, and the narrative is constantly evolving as more details emerge. Public protests and debates highlight the growing demand for accountability among high-profile figures. The outcome of this case will have long-lasting consequences for P. Diddy's legacy. His contributions to music and culture are undeniable, but the shadow of these allegations threatens to overshadow his achievements. The press and public are watching closely, awaiting the final verdict. If cleared of all charges, he faces the difficult task of rebuilding his image. His PR team is already strategizing on how to restore his reputation. This will involve a careful and calculated approach, addressing the concerns of fans and business partners alike. A guilty verdict could lead to irreparable damage to his career and reputation. The stakes are incredibly high, and the consequences of a negative outcome could be devastating.
The music industry, his fans, and the world are waiting with bated breath to see how this chapter in P. Diddy's life will unfold. We gotta, we gotta Ooh, kick it. This is Paul. Okay. You're telling me we gotta kick it and shit. He's like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck is this just saying? <laughs> 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 fruit, my pop is a fruit pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fruit pile. Trust me. Yeah, I love this drink. Where Chance you put my bag? I like yeah. when you like this, daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when, you, oh, when you're right scrambling here, right and right scraping. I, I like that. Shit. You know, I've been practicing. See where I look, you look back me? on where I became. Mm. Did you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm saying, miss, it seems like a thing. I miss it's his partying birthday with party, Puff, man. Man, I miss but I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. Mm. No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you right scrambling right and scraping. No, for no, that was you. Scrambling. <laughs> you said, you said, what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. When you're scrambling and scraping. Hey, man. <laughs> nah, nah. I mean, I was You don't caught. go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh? I mean, it's, I mean it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah. Back up, fellas, show up, man. Look back city, nigga. I love you, yo. You go respect this hustle. Now, what you know about that? Hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. You know yeah, I mean? that's what's up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's up. Oh, my God. Somebody, oh. Back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the all for the frosted place because he used to always get up early with me. <laughs> now he's one of the richest yo, in the world. And I'm yo, what, what the, the f did Puff, Puff just, just say? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me, so. Um, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. What's up, man? You good? I'm good. How are you? All right, young brother, everything's good. Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything. Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? No, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Diddy had been trying to get to be before a minute, and his management was backing him off. But it wasn't until Usher took over management and had guardianship and gave temporary guardianship to the Diddler for 48 hours. Think about that. He'd already been to the hospital. That situation that Gene was talking about. Mm. And you still took Bieber there, but you got custody of him first. Diddy had already tried. They wouldn't let him. Actually, someone made reference to the fact that Diddy trying to get at Bieber the way he was trying to get at Bieber was looking a little predatory. And then Usher came in and discovered it and managed him and got custody of him and promised to look after him. And then he sent him to the diddler. Does that sound like a good guy? It's horrible, it's horrible. Does that sound like a good guy? Now that we know what Diddy's really like. They're not seeing what the intentions was in his heart when he took Justin Bieber there. No. Oh. Let's be honest. He mm. took Justin Bieber there. We was in one of those um, exotic shops. Yo, I'm gonna turn this Cause this funny. We was in Atlanta. We go to those exotic shops where you get all kind of like, they buy oils, dildos, uh, um, spooky. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? All kind of, all kind of. So they would just give him a brown paper bag, and they wouldn't even. He couldn't. He'd never put it out on the on the you know on the on the counter when we get ready to take it out. He would always just give a man a, a wad of money. So they just thought it was cool. So they'll give him a brown bag, he'll go through that. So one day I was walking down the aisle with him. And so then he just stopped and he just started picking this off the aisle. And he was getting a, you know, he, he went up there like several times just get, 
down. And so then I I, 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 I pinned in on what he was, you know, where he was getting it from. And because I was just staying a couple of feet behind him. So when I went by, I looked up, I said, yo. And I seen said butt plugs. And I said, yo, my man, what'd you get this for? And then <laughs> on everything I love, yeah, man, I he said, yo, Rick, he said, Yo, can I do my shopping by myself? <laughs> Yo, hold on. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you no. got to tell him no. Oh, I, I did. There's certain people that you don't talk about uh, because you just don't. Um, there were certain people that I seen down there from Beyonce, Jay-Z. Um, <laughs> Uh, you don't tell on P. Diddy, but P. Diddy, um... So, the, the, you said you, you don't tell on these people, is that is that like a code uh, that all victims adhere to, they don't talk about this stuff? Yes, you don't, because nobody's gonna believe you. Um, you're nothing to them. You don't you you don't count you are you are just you're just a toy um you're not essential as they call them uh you, you're expendable and as a child in that situation i wasn't the type of person that was fighting all the time because i started to learn who i was i started to learn my pimp i started to learn what i was in i started to learn that you don't fight you you um you watch what you say, you watch what you do. And at, at, at some point I stopped fighting people. You know, we even have interviews um, that he gave, you know, to entertainment outlets back in, you know, the late nineties, where he says, my parties are wild, you I'll know. I'll be arrested. I'll be arrested for my parties. And, and you look back at that and he almost, what he says has come true too. Your parties are the hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. But we, we ain't gonna stop, we gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. You gonna hear about my party, they're gonna be shutting them down, they're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things, just cause we wanna have a good time. Well, it seemed like tongue in cheek at the time, but now you look at it in the context of this indictment, could be more to it. I also just think, you know, it was kind of part of his hip hop story, I, I guess, in a way, you know, his name Puff Daddy came from rumours of a, a temper, you know, that he would huff and puff and, and kind of be, you know, pretty um, uh, a bold character, I guess. And, and those rumours have followed him his entire career. And ha! Gotti! Ha! Gotti! <laughs> I mean, I hit rock bottom disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. 